people rising, people rising. Don, what's good, sis? Today is President's Day. Is today a federal holiday? People were today? Like, I forgot. I don't know. I probably should know that. Okay. Y'all, all right, beautiful people. Happy Monday! It is February the 20th, 2023, day 338 of year four of reading through books, laws, and prophets. Another four year consecutive day count at 1357. Today, we're picking back up the romance of the red star, which is another name for the waspy on page 52. I forget the chapter. And then once we get done there, we, oh, right, it's the last two chapters in the cycle of the Sean, right? So, uh, eight and nine. Yeah, and nine. They, well, they're pretty good length. It'll probably take us to the 30-minute mark. So, we're going to read them two chapters, and that'll be the end of that book. And then we're going to hop on over here to the Essene Gospel of Peace and pick that back up for a little bit. And then we'll call it a day. All right, beautiful people. Father, we thank you that your creativity is limitless. Prince, what's going on, Bradwin? Avia, greetings. Hannah, shalom, shalom. Just me. Yes, many blessings to everyone. May create a bless. Derry CM, shalom, shalom. Auntie, top of the day to you. Good morning. All right, and everybody else, see already hanging out in the background. Facebook, YouTube. Let's get rocking and rolling. All right, y'all. Book of a song, chapter eight, page fifty-two. Um, in big blue, it's the it's chapter eight. I ain't, I ain't even about to look up the page number. Just go to chapter eight. <laughs> All right. Now the time. Now I had the time come for the end of the first dawn of Dan after the creation of man, and this was known in the Ethereum heavens. And this was known in the Ethereum heavens where lived countless millions of Jehovah's sons and daughters emancipated. And as might be expected, they determined to descend from all sides to witness the labors of Ashon and to receive his works as a profitable lesson for their own future on other new worlds. Consequently, there had consequently there began to appear in the firmament far off stars where the name of Ashon had been known for thousands of years. From all sides they came, growing brighter and brighter, larger and larger. Ashon spoke to his companions, saying, Make ready, O my beloved, my friends and your friends are coming. Put our ship in order. Let the pillars of fire light light the pillars of fire and spread out the sails, shining that they may be glorified in Jehovah's name. The proper purpose the proper persons accomplish these things. And to the eastward of Yeshua, the Ethereum ship of Ashon was anchored, and so great was the size thereof that there was room for the Ethereans of Anachron. 
and upward of 300 million of the redeemed of earth besides. Ashan said, when our friends arrive, we shall join them and make an excursion around the world, discovering its rank and glorious promises. But as to the 900 million Druhas, which I sent off to Hudal and Gia, we shall pass thither on our way to Anacron. Brighter and brighter grew the descending stars, the Ethereum ships from far off worlds, and larger and larger, till in majesty they neared Yeshua. Ashong then came down and sat at the foot of the throne, according to the custom of God's. God came down and took him by the hand, saying, Son of Jehovah, arise, and take thy host, and embark in Jehovah's ship, going wherever thou wilt. Ashong rose up. The Esenars and trumpeters played and sang. Then Ashong said, one more love have I in the world, O Jehovah. I go from Yeshua, but my love remains. To thee, O God, will I look back in hope and love, for thou wert raised by me. And to thy lords, what less could I say? Yet, yea, and to all the hosts I leave. Yea, and to all the hosts I leave within these realms. A shong touched God's right hand, then saluting with the third sign of Emeth to Jehovah, departed, and the marshals conducted him off to the ship. Ashong and his Ethereum host rose up in curtains of light, and presently the ship was loosened from its anchorage and floated upward, and all the angels having entered it, the sails were spread out and the mantles suspended on every side, till the whole vessel with its thousands of masts and arcs looked like a world on fire. The inhabitants of Yeshua feared and trembled for the mighty works of gods and goddesses. And yet the Esenars on departing the ship chanted more than a million voices. The Yeshuans sang with them amidst their tears with souls overflowing with awe and love and admiration. And at the same time, the descending ships of other gods and goddesses from Ethera were drawing nearer and nearer. And on every side, the firmament seemed filled with worlds on fire. Presently, they came, first one, then another of the Ethereans, and they made it fast to Ashong's ship, until thus more than 500 were united into one mighty vessel, and yet so near to Yeshua that all could be seen. So remember, Yeshua is a place, like I'm heading over to this next city. It's literally like a city of rest and relaxation. And when they had united, there were countless millions of angels, thus in close proximity, many who had known one another for thousands of years and some who were older than earth and knew its history. And these had companions as old as themselves and they were ripe in experience with corporal worlds, stars and suns and other regions of Jehovah's kingdom. So great was the wisdom of these gods and goddesses that to come within the earth's atmosphere was sufficient to enable them to read all the souls and prayers of mortals and all the thoughts and desires of the spirits of the lower heaven belonging to earth. Isn't that amazing? I brought this out last time. This is how wise, how well developed spiritually that these group of Ethereans are. All they had to do was just come in proximity and they could hear the, the prayers, the thoughts and desires of the hearts so of all those belonging to the earth. I'm going to read that again. Listen to this. So great was the region of these gods and goddesses that to come within earth's atmosphere was sufficient to enable them to read all the souls and prayers of mortals and all the thoughts and desires of the spirits of the lower heaven belonging to earth. To each and all of them, the voice of Jehovah was ever present and their power was like their wisdom. Jehovah hath said to the corporean, I have given power to hear one or two things at the same time, at the same moment of time. But my gods can hear intelligently tens of thousands of men speaking at the same time. They can find a way to answer them also. I remember when we read over this the first time in um, Big Blue, I brought up the, um, the movie um, Bruce Almighty. Yeah, Bruce Almighty. When, um, what's his face? But anyway, he got to be God for a little bit and answering all the prayers. He figured out a way to answer everybody. He just responded, yes. <laughs> he tried to he tried to consolidate all the prayers in a in a manageable way. It was funny. If y'all ain't seen it, y'all should go watch it. Fritz, Shalom, Levon, blessings, Elijah, peace and blessings, fam. 
and everybody else and then, then then snuck in and took a seat in the back of the room. Top of the day to you. <clears throat> Jehovah has said to the corporean, I have given power to hear one or two things at the same moment of time. But my gods can hear intelligently tens of thousands of men speaking at the same time. They can find a way to answer them also. When the ships were ready for departure, Ashong said, let us pass low over Yeshua and ye shall hear and see those I have founded in a new heaven. His companion said, Jehovah's will be done. <clears throat> and after they had visited Yeshua, they descended to the earth and round about the places of the Lord's. And when they had seen all and heard all the explanation from those with the shong of the state the earth was in and of the earth and of the heavens of the earth, they rose and sailed toward Anakron with the Anishong, whither Ashong had invited them. Last chapter, chapter 9. After the ascent of the Ethereum host of Ashong to Ethera, God and his lords worked faithfully as Jehovah had commanded. The lords, who were now called Adonia, were such as had been brought forth on earth. And God, who had dominion in the atmosphere of earth, was also earthborn. And so were all the angels of atmosphere, the product of earth. Jehovah said, through the flowers of the field, I express myself in color and perfume. Through the lion and the mastodon, I express myself with power and voraciousness. Through the lamb and the dove, I express myself in meekness and docility. Through man, I express myself in words and actions. And all men, the wise and the ignorant, are channels of my expression. Some have thick tongues and poor speech. Nevertheless, they are my babes, my sons and daughters. <clears throat> After the Samoan age, I gave to the earth for my Ethereum heaven sons and daughters, and they abode with mortals for 3,000 years. And my Ethereans established Lewis on the lands of the earth, and they commanded the Lewis, saying, Your office is to lead man and woman by inspiration to dwell together as husband and wife. I figure I'm a rock as a Lewis when I get to that position. That's the one I'm super excited about becoming. It's on a little lower levels. But I figure that's why I meet, look, me and my husband, we're going to make great Lewis, right? You know, because we're, we're advocates for marriage and seeing people stay together and work work through the problems well. Let, let, let's try this. Let's see if this works. Okay, have, have we... It, it, did you give us all the information? Like, is there anything hiding in the closet? Maybe we need to go assess that to see why this is not working. Because, you know, we got to keep everything on the table if we are going to make this right. Listen. After the Samoan age, I gave to the earth from my Ethereum heavens sons and daughters, and they abode with mortals for 3,000 years. And my Ethereans established Lewis on the lands of the earth, and they commanded the Lewis, saying, your office is to lead man and woman by inspiration to dwell together as husband and wife. In Cosmon, I will found the wise man, but he shall not know why man and woman live not indiscriminately as the beast. I will show him that they who profess me are led by me, but they who deny me go down to indiscriminate communion. Out of my works shall the lesson of the early days of earth show the presence of my hand. But my Lewis was man and woman, but my Lewis was man and, oh, is that but or by? That's but. But my Lewis, remember Lewis, L-O-O apostrophe I-S, um, they are masters of generations, right? So they see through generations of family lines, right? To keep them together and make sure they're developing the hearing ear of the creator where you can talk directly back and forth to the father, right? Okay. But my Lewis was man and woman inspired to raise up sons and daughters to glorify me and my works. I want, it says but here, but I think this is supposed to say by, which is why it's throwing me off. Let me just, let me go back a couple sentences. After the Samoan age, I gave to the earth from my Ethereum heavens sons and daughters, and they abode with mortals for 3,000 years. And my Ethereans established Lewis on the lands of the earth, and they commanded the Lewis, saying, 
Your office is to lead man and woman by inspiration to dwell together as husband and wife. In Cosmon, I will confound the wise man, but he shall not know why man and woman live not indiscriminately as the beast. I will show him that they who profess me are led by me, but they who deny me go down to indiscriminate communion. Out of my works shall the lessons of the early days of earth show the presence of my hand. But my Lewis, by my Lewis was man and woman inspired to raise up sons and daughters to glorify me and my works, such as could comprehend me, having faith that my presence should ultimately triumph for the highest and best, I commanded to be called faithless, and I will keep a thread of the line of faithless on the earth till the end. God, through his lords, sent Lewis to the Ehims, and by controlling the parentage of the unborn, brought into the world a new race of men of the same blood as of old. And these heard the voice of the Lord, and man was delivered into wisdom, peace, and virtue, and the earth became as a garden of sweet-smelling flowers and luxurious fruit. The first harvest was two hundred years, and the number of brides and bridegrooms was six hundred million of grade ninety-two. The second harvest was two hundred years, and was eight hundred million angels of grade eighty-nine. The third harvest was six hundred years, and was two thousand million of angels of grade eighty-three. The fourth harvest was 500 years and was 2,300 million angels of grade 74. The fifth harvest was 300 years and was 600 million angels of grade 62. And now began wars and atmosphere, thousands of angels against thousands and millions against millions. And again, darkness came upon the earth and her heavens and war and destruction were upon all the nations of the world. For so great was the number of the spirits of darkness around mortals that they destroyed even their own cities and kingdoms. The sixth harvest was 400 years and was 900 million angels of grade 51. And this was the last harvest for none were of sufficient grade to abide in the ethereal heavens for the attractions of the great wickedness caused angels of heaven to desert their schools and factories and descend to mortals. So remember, you have to be in order to graduate out of out of the heavens that are connected to the earth. You have to be at least grade 50. Anything below that, you got to stay a little bit longer and develop a little bit more spiritually. At the end of the second cycle, there were in atmosphere 6,000 million angels of darkness who knew not who they were, nor where they dwelt, neither knowing nor caring whether there were other heavens or not. And man distinguished not his sister or mother, and woman distinguished not her brother or father, and man became a harvest, and man became as a harvest that is blighted and rotten because of its rankness. Jehovah said, Now will I bewail thee, O earth. The glories of thy heavens that are past and gone shall be a lesson to the gods. Thy place of Horde and Moab, once the holy place of my son Sathantes, has been destroyed. Now Yeshua, where floated the plateau of many resurrections, is filled with millions of souls that hear not and see not, but are forever burrowing deep in darkness. The plateaus are broken up. The substance scattered and unorganized, nor is there anything left of the glorious work of the gods in these heavens. And that, my beautiful people, is the end of the cycle of the song. And tomorrow we begin the synopsis of the first 16 cycles. That was good. All right. The next. Shalom. Shibu. Hey, girl. Hey. I have by you must have said something earlier. Okay. All right, y'all. Page 29. Okay. So we paused with um let me see. Oh, Satan leaving your body, the dude that was fasting and was losing all that weight and stuff. And so he was uh Satan was the uh, was destroying his body by him fasting too long. Okay, so he was cast out. They made that mixture of hot milk and he breathed it in and 
Okay, so that's what we we pause. Um, talking about the worm that came out of his body, the abominable worm came out of the sick man's throat. He recovered at once his breath, and then all his pains ceased. Okay. All right, so on page 29, one, two, the third little line, it's not a paragraph, it says, peace be with you. That's what we pause at. So we're going to pause, we're going to start right after that. Page 29. And they said no word at all, but cast only themselves down before him and touched the hem of his garment in token of their healing. Give thanks not to me, but to your earthly mother who sent you her healing angels. Go and sin no more, that you may never again see disease, and let the healing angels become your guardians. And this is something that you will see in the New Testament, that depending on who teaching you from the Bible, um, they just completely wash over this and they still began to worship Jesus when um he was always constantly pointing people back to the father but they they still made him an idol right and people don't seem to bring that part out and they just forget about what he said and just worship him he's God right but even here it says don't don't give thanks to me give thanks to the earthly mother go ahead Let him scoop some ice real quick. I for real do not remember those people. And I did not know that information that she had bestowed into my ears. Yes, and you me. were you were small. I said that to Elijah and I was like, he's like, yeah, bro. <laughs> Okay. No. Give thanks not to me, but to your earthly mother who sent you her healing angels. Go and send no more that you may never again see disease and let the healing angels become your guardians. But they answered him, whither should we go, master, for you, for with you are the words of eternal life. Tell us, what are the sins which we must shun that we may never more see disease? Jesus answered, be it so according to your faith. And he sat down among them saying, it was said of them of old time, honor thy heavenly father and thy earthly mother and do their commandments that thy days may be long upon the earth. And here's something that they, they chopped in half in the Bible because, um, yes. Why didn't he just ever say to people? Go, go ahead, I cut you off. Go actively pursue making life. And not in the way of having sex and, you know, like, I mean, making life as in growing something and meditating. That literally cures all your problems. Yeah, I don't know. You have to know who your audience is and how you got to teach them. Right? I don't know. Jesus okay. Jesus. Hold on. Jesus answered, Be it so according to your faith. And he sat down among them saying, it was said to them of old time, honor thy heavenly father and thy earthly mother and do their commandments that thy days may be long upon the earth. And it actually says it takes out heavenly father and earthly mother is just put honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the earth. Right. But then when you read it from here, it gives you another whole perspective. Right. Because. Reading the Bible is just like, okay, my parents, my mom and my dad, honor them, yes. And they're still blessing in doing that. But this rings even more true when you honor your heavenly father and your earthly mother, that you're, when you honor them, that your days literally may be long upon the earth. Your flesh will live long and your spirit will live long and it will thrive in health. First time, shalom, shalom. It was said to them of old, honor thy heavenly father and thy earthly mother and do their commandments that thy days may be long upon the earth. And next afterward was given this commandment, thou shalt not kill for life is given to all by God and that which God has given, let not man take away. For I tell you truly from one mother proceeds all that lives upon the earth. Therefore, he who kills, kills his brother. And from for a second, I thought that was yours. I forgot. No, I already switched. Okay. I'm sorry. That was my alarm to switch. Hold on. Let me go back.
You're welcome. Hold on. It was said of them of old time, honor thy heavenly father and thy earthly mother and do their commandments that thy days may be long upon the earth. And afterward was given this commandment, thou shalt not kill for life is given to all by God and that which God has given, let not man take away. For I tell you truly from one mother proceeds all that lives upon the earth. Therefore, he who kills, kills his brother. And from him will the earthly mother turn away and will pluck from him her quickening breast. And he will be shunned by her angels. Excuse me. And Satan will dwell in his body. And the flesh of slain beasts in his body will become his own tomb. For I tell you truly, he who kills, kills himself. And whoso eats the flesh of slain beasts, Eats the body of death. See? To sign you shalom, shalom. Even here, even here, it's talking about eating flesh of beasts, right? And they say, don't do it. Hold on, let me read it again. And from him will the earthly mother turn away and will pluck from him her quickening breast. And he will be shunned by her angels. And Satan will, and will, I'm sorry, and Satan will have his dwelling in his body. And the flesh of slain beasts in his body will become his own tomb. For I tell you truly, he who kills, kills himself. And whoso eats the flesh of slain beasts, eats of the body of death. For in his blood, every drop of their blood turns to poison. In his breath, their, in his breath, their breath to stink in his flesh their flesh to boils in his bones their bones to chalk in his bowels their bowels to decay in his eyes their eyes to scales in his ears their ears to waxy issue and their death will become his death for only in the service of your heavenly father are your debts of seven years forgiven in seven in seven days. This says clays. That's definitely a typo. That's a typo. Mom, <clears throat> yes. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? For the tree of life to happen, there must have been a seed at first. Oh, who first? For the tree of life to happen, there must have been a seed first. Yeah, there's always a seed first. Try to explain that to the girls. They have fought me for an hour straight. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't talking to them. I, I'm not getting into that conversation with you. Yeah. I'm not going to lose my breath. I was minding my business, and then they just came out of nowhere with it. Because a girl, because a, ooh, a beautiful voice was singing. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, sure, man. I don't want to go like this. Yeah. Then Jamie came. I was like, bro, y'all logic don't make sense. You know what happens when superiority ever happens? A war breaks out. Okay. For only in the service, <clears throat> yeah, thank you. For only in the service of your heavenly Father are your debts of seven years forgiven in seven days. But Satan forgives you nothing, and you must pay him for all, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, life for life, death for death. For the wages of sin is death. Kill not. Neither eat the flesh of your innocent prey, lest you become the slaves of Satan. For that is the path of sufferings, and it leads unto death. But do the will of God that his angels may serve. But do the will of God that his angels may serve you on the way of life. Obey therefore the words of God. Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for me and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is breath of life i give every green herb for me also the milk of everything that moveth and liveth upon the earth shall be meat for you even as the green herb have i given unto them so i give their milk unto you but flesh and blood which quickens it shall ye not eat and I will go as far to say as don't even eat that now nowadays. I mean, oof, yeah, no, um, because 
even like cow's milk and stuff, yeah. the FDA, because you can't pasteurize it and cleanse out all the impurities, like all the way, like what the cows have is for their, their calves, right? Just leave it alone. Let quit, yeah. quit milking the cows. Let, yeah. let their babies drink it. Yeah, because like you're eating another... Yeah, but that's, this, that's, right? that's not the point I was getting to, son. I'm going to put it in a nice way. Imagine a woman breastfeeding her milk, make it in the cheese, sell it in the store. You going to eat that? Honestly, if you do, you're nasty. You need to recheck your morals. But basically, <coughs> it's what you're doing. But it's from an animal that is more prone to disease than you are. That's crazy. I mean, well, I never thought about... <laughs> Selling my milk and pasteurizing it, <laughs> making it some cheese. But 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 it's against your will. It, I'm sure it's against the animal's will. But I mean, I didn't know you was gonna say that. I thought you was going somewhere else. But yeah, that's gross. But the FDA allows a certain amount of pus and blood to stay in that milk because they can't get it out anyway. So I would say just 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 leave it alone. Most people of um, of um, well, I know a lot of colored people, not just like black people, but even like uh, Hispanic people, you know, people of uh, color or whatever, they don't process milk too well in their bodies, right? They're lactose intolerant, you know, and it could be like some of everybody, but I know for certain um, a lot of people of color, their bodies can't really process it well, you know, some will still just keep on going with it and they just pay the price and I'll just go to the bathroom later. I, I can't. Jamia Shalom says, but yeah. Leave that alone. It's enough. Get get some plant based milk, right? Get some plant based milk. Oat milk is for goats. It's better than every other milk anyway. Get oat milk from yeah. Oat milk. Um, depending on if you eat almonds or not, uh, how married you are to Dr. Sabi's teachings about almonds or whatever, you know. But it's it's different type of plant based milk. You you can make it yourself if you got the patience and the tools to do it. You know, but, you know, I, I just say stay away from all animal-made products. That's that's just my personal opinion. I mean, but y'all can do what y'all want to do. Okay, hold on. But, you know, Hold on. Let me go back up. For only in the service of your heavenly Father are your debts of seven years forgiven in seven days. But Satan forgives you nothing, and you must pay him for all. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, life for life, death for death. For the wages of sin is death. Kill not, neither eat the flesh of your innocent prey, lest you become the slaves of Satan. For that is the path of sufferings, and it leads unto death. But do the will of God that his angels may serve you on the way of life. Obey, excuse me, obey therefore the words of God, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face, of, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is breath of life. I give every green herb for meat. Also, the milk of everything that moveth and liveth upon the earth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given unto them, so I give their milk unto you. But flesh and blood, which quickens it, ye shall not eat. Hold on, I read that wrong. Listen to this. Hold on. But flesh and the blood. Hold up. No, this is just hit me in a whole different way. There's a comma here. It said, listen, but flesh and the blood which quickens it, ye shall not eat. It said, don't eat the flesh and don't eat the blood. Don't eat the flesh nor the blood that quickens the flesh. You shall not eat it. Look. Yeah, coconut milk. Did you say tiger nuts? <laughs> That's what, wait, is that a typo, Bennett? Tiger nuts? <laughs> is that a thing before I start cracking jokes? <laughs> don't, don't know how you know about those. But, okay. 
I don't know that's the type of milk we should be drinking. No, seriously. That's not a typo. It's tiger nuts. Where did you come across this experience? And you know, see, if I type that in Google, I'm afraid that it's going to give me the wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, like, be a little bit more specific. Like... Yeah. Please. Like, I'll wait. Tiger nuts? Did I say it right? I mean, it just... Something just... I'm going to wait. I'm going to sacrifice mine. It grows under the ground. And it's called tiger it's probably the appearance. It's probably because of the appearance. I don't know. It probably looks like a fierce looking seed. Probably like a like a spiky seed. I don't know. I don't know. I've never heard of it a day in my life. This okay. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> look, I'm going to have to put my phone on incognito mode and look it up. <laughs> no, you're going to incite it. No. Do you have safe search on it? Uh, Y'all, I'm a little bit slow. I'm a little bit slow. So I, I never heard of that a day in my life. I was about to, you know, yeah, I was about to crack some ignorant joke. <laughs> Amazon. Okay, I'm going to look for it on Amazon and look at it. That, that'll be safe. Okay. Let me go back to this. Hold on. But flesh and the blood which quickens it shall ye not eat. And surely your spurting blood will I require. Your blood wherein is your soul. I will require all slain beasts and the souls of all slain men. For I, the Lord thy God, am a God strong and jealous, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I clearly knew it was clearly not the nuts of an actual tiger dog. <laughs> But it was just, but I, I had to double check, right? Because some people eat hog nuts, hog testicles. They call them, um, they call them, um, mountain oysters. No, that's bull testicles. <laughs> Whatever. It's the testicles of some beast. I that is. That. That, oh, people eat everything from the rooty to the tootie, Jeremiah. It's disgusting. They eat the ears, the feet, pig knuckles. Like, <laughs> what kind of meat is around knuckles? Like, that's y'all just. Mm, let me let me keep reading this. <laughs> it's an abomination in your gut. <laughs> Look, hold on. And after these words, they all remained silent, save one who called out. What am I to do, master, if I see a wild beast rend my brother in the forest? Shall I let my brother perish or kill the wild beast? Shall I not thus transgress the law? And Jesus answered, it was said of them, it was said to them of old time, all beasts that move upon the earth, all the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air are given into thy power. I tell you truly, of all creatures living upon the earth, God created only man after his image. Wherefore, beasts are for man and not man for beasts. You do not therefore transgress the law if you kill the wild beast to save your brother's life. For I tell you truly, man is more than beast. But he who kills the beast without a cause, though the beast attack him not through lust for slaughter or for its flesh or for its hide or yet for its tusk, is evil is the deed which he does. For he is turned into a wild beast himself. Wherefore his end also as wherefore is his end also as the end of the wild beast. Then another said, Moses, the greatest in Israel, suffered our forefathers to eat the flesh of clean beasts, and forbade only the flesh of unclean beasts. Why therefore do you forbid us the flesh of all beasts? Which law comes from God? Which law comes from God? That of Moses? Or your law and Jesus answered God gave by Moses ten commandments to your forefathers 
These commandments are hard, said your forefathers, and they could not keep them. When Moses saw this, he had compassion on his people and would not that they perish. And then he gave them 10 times 10 commandments, less hard that they might follow them. For he whose feet are strong as the mountain of Zion needs no crush, needs no crutches. But he whose limbs do shake gets further having crutches than without them. And Moses said to the Lord, my heart is filled with sorrow for my people will be lost. But they are without knowledge and are not able to understand thy commandments. They are as little children who cannot yet understand their father's words, which is where all these extra 630 commandments came in because they was like, 10 is too hard. 10? All right, listen, elders, deacons, let's get together. They said these 10 too hard. So let's break it down into bite-sized pieces for them. Like, I'm to them like, who really can't keep those 10? They're the, the easiest things. You should just by good morals and values, you should be able to just keep those 10 right ain't nothing hard about those but they were saying those 10 were too hard so they decided to break them down into bite-sized pieces which multiplied them tremendously now you got a whole 630 of them right so it's like okay well pick and choose from these ones you want hold on before i tell you truly hold on wait oh my page flipped Okay, yeah, my page flipped. I didn't see it flip. Okay, let me go back. Then another said, Moses, the great in Israel, suffered our forefathers to eat the flesh of clean beasts and forbade only the flesh of unclean beasts. Why, therefore, do you forbid us the flesh of all beasts? Which law comes from God, that of Moses or your law? And Jesus answered, God gave by Moses ten commandments to your forefathers, these commandments are hard, said your forefathers, and they could not keep them. When Moses saw this, he had compassion on his people and would not that they perish. And then he gave them 10 times 10 commandments, less hard that they might follow them. For he whose feet are strong as the mountain of Zion needs no crutches, but he whose limbs do shake gets further having crutches than without them. And Moses said to the Lord, my heart is filled with sorrow for my people will be lost for they are without knowledge and are not able to understand thy commandments. They are as little children who cannot yet understand their father's words. Suffer, Lord, that I give them other laws that they may not perish. If they may not be with thee, Lord, let them not be against thee that they may sustain themselves. And when the time has come and they are ripe for thy words, Reveal to them thy laws. For Moses did break the two tablets of stone, whereupon were written the Ten Commandments, and he gave them ten times ten in their stead. And of these ten times ten, the scribes and Pharisees have made hundreds times ten commandments, and they have laid unbearable burdens on your shoulders that they themselves do not carry. For the more not, for the more nigh are the commandments to God, the less do we need. And the farther they are from God, then the more we need. Let me read that again. Hold on. For that did Moses break the two tablets of stone, whereupon were written the Ten Commandments, and he gave them ten times ten in their stead. And of these ten times ten, the scribes and Pharisees have made, have made a hundred times ten commandments. And they have laid unbearable burdens on your shoulders that they themselves do not carry. For the more nigh are the commandments to God, the less do we need. Okay, that's, that's why I was getting confused, okay? For the more nigh are the commandments to God, for the more nigh are the commandments to God, the less do we need. And the farther they are from God, then the more do we need, right? So it's pretty much saying the closer you are to the Father, the less commandments you need, right? We don't need to write out all of this stuff for you to follow and pull yourself together. But it's saying the further away that you are from God, the more commandments you need because you can't even hear his voice anyway. So at least if we write it down, you got something to follow to keep you on the path, right? And we find that 
that to be true. The closer we get to the creator, we really begin to break out all of the religious dogma that's kind of held its thumb over our lives to keep us in line, right? It's such an amazing time of freedom that it blows your mind. And people who get more free by the day to those who are still under the, we'll just say, the bondage of the law, right? That could go either way when we're talking to different people. Those who are under the bondage of the law, they think that you're sinning because you shouldn't be doing that. Oh, hold on. The law say do this. No, the law was for you, you vagabond, right? I'm not going to go out there and be willy-nilly with my life. That's for you, those who don't know how to control themselves, right? But we ain't going to get into that law thing, right? Because some people teach the law. Well, we're free from the law. It's dead. We're free in Christ. But you're still living worse than the ones who are keeping the law. So you need something. They they just take everything and they push it all on Jesus. They live any kinds of ways thinking that they're saved by, by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Boy, you're going to be the first ones lingering around. Lingering around around here in that place that you call hell that you think you bypassing nope they get in your room ready for you <laughs> listen hold on for that did most oh, let me go back hold on let me just go back up I'm, I'm gonna read this again it's like my fourth time okay then another said, Moses, the greatest in Israel, suffered our forefathers to eat the flesh of clean beasts and forbade only the flesh of unclean beasts. Why, therefore, do you forbid us the flesh of all beasts? Which law comes from God, that of Moses or your law? And Jesus answered, God gave by Moses ten commandments to your forefathers. These commandments are hard, said your forefathers, and they could not keep them. When Moses saw this, he had compassion on his people and would not that they perish. And then he gave them 10 times 10 commandments, less hard that they might follow them. For he whose feet are strong as the mountain of Zion needs no crutches, right? Those of us who are closer to the creator, we don't need all this stuff. We know what to do. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get on with it, right? For he whose feet are as strong as the mountain of Zion needs no crutches, but he whose limbs do shake gets further having crutches than without them. And Moses said to the Lord, my heart is filled with sorrow for my people will be lost. Talking about Israel, hard headed Israel. And Moses said to the Lord, my heart is filled with sorrow for my people will be lost for they are without knowledge and are not able to understand thy commandments. They are as little children who cannot yet understand their father's words. Suffer, Lord, that I give them other laws that they may not perish. If they may not be with thee, Lord, let them not be against thee, that they may sustain themselves. And when the time has come and they are ripe for thy words, reveal to them thy laws. For that did Moses break the two tablets of stone, whereupon are written the Ten Commandments, right? But we get... He broke it because he got pissed with the people because they was having an orgy while he was up on the mountain getting the commandments from the Lord. Broke them in half. He got pissed. Lord, we need to make some more. Yeah, they pissed me off. I broke them. Yeah, just, I'm sorry. Well, you write them this time, Moses. Okay, let's go again. <laughs> For that did Moses break the two tablets of stone whereon were written the Ten Commandments. And he gave them ten times ten in their stead. And of these ten times ten, the scribes and Pharisees have made a hundred times ten commandments. And they have laid unbearable burdens on your shoulders that they themselves do not carry. For the more nigh are for the more nigh hold on, for the more nigh are the commandments to God, the less do we need. And the farther they are from God, then the more do we need. Wherefore are the laws of the Pharisees and scribes innumerable, the laws of the sons of man, seven, of the angels, three, and of God, one. Therefore, I teach you only those laws which you can understand that you may become men and follow the seven laws of the son of man. Then will the unknown angels of the heavenly father also reveal their laws to you that God's Hold on. Then, hold on. all right, so, all right, love you. Go, get out of here, boy. Let me go. 
I'm already at my last few minutes. I love you. Have a wonderful day. You are amazing. Thank you. And so are you. But I'm going to be honest. What? When he grabbed me in my head, I was like, oh, my God, go away. Bye. As soon as I tried to, tried to, I tried to walk past y'all, as soon as I walked in, I was really hoping I wasn't there. I was like, and I saw all y'all just standing there. I was like, mm-hmm. Because I ain't seen you in, how old are you now? Like, 15 years since you was five. I was glad to see little Jeremiah all grown up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me finish this. Hold on. Therefore, I teach you only those laws which you can understand that you may become men and follow the seven laws of the Son of Man. Then will the unknown angels of the Heavenly Father also reveal their laws to you that God's Holy Spirit may descend upon you and lead you to his law. And all were astonished at his wisdom and asked him, Continue, Master, and teach us all the laws which we can receive. And Jesus continued, God commanded your forefathers, Thou shalt not kill. But their heart was hardened, and they killed. Then Moses desired that, that at least they should not kill men, and he suffered them to kill beasts. And then the heart of your forefathers was hardened yet more, and they killed men and beasts likewise. But I do say to you, kill neither men nor beasts, nor yet the food which goes into your mouth. For if you eat living food, the same will quicken you. But if you kill your food, the dead food will kill you also. And if you read the Old Testament enough, or if you have, you would notice the discrepancy when God was talking, right? You would hear the true voice of creator when he was speaking to one of the prophets, right? One of the prophets, like as somebody who was truly in line with creator, right? So those truly in line with creator, we learned from a wise speak that uh, the, the true prophets um, of Israel, they were called faithists. But when they went into uh, Israel, they began to be known by other names, right? So they were called faithists. Um, but you will, you will notice if you go through it, there's a t there's time when the, the God of Israel is telling them to slaughter everybody, man, woman, and child. You could tell by that right there that that was not true God. Because then further on in the books of the prophets, you will hear true God speaking to the prophet where he said, I never once told them to kill anybody. They keep slaughtering the beasts. That they slaughtering everything. I never once told them to kill anybody. And so that, that was one of the contradictions I began to catch. I'm like, wait a minute. You did tell them. You told them to kill everybody. Everything that pissed them up against the wall. Man, woman, children, babies, the nurse and suckling. I'm like, I, went, I was like, you did say that. But at that point, when I was going through that, I still had not began to realize the the tonality change. If you read it enough, right, you, you're going to first start coming across those inconsistencies and those things. I'm like, wait a minute. You said you did it, but you clearly did here. I'm like, okay, there's a problem, right? So the more I kept going through it, and I, like I was listening to the Old Testament and reading it, I would listen to the Old Testament over and over and over from, uh, from Genesis all the way to Malachi, right? And over and over and over again. And I will open it up and search. I'm like, you did tell them to do that. I'm like, this is like, you got a problem with remembering what you said? <laughs> and the creator would be like, Pamela, pay attention. It wasn't me. I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay. So boom, boom, boom. But I started to get it a little bit. I'm like, there are clearly multiple voices that are speaking through here. But all of that didn't really really come to light like it did like i understand it now till i read a waspy and all those missing pieces the voice changes or waspy literally explains all of that but i didn't have anybody telling me this this was from my own personal study for years of only reading through the bible i, I read it so much that i began to notice the little things about it how the voices would change i'm like this why is that doing that because if you talk to somebody long enough if you have a relationship with somebody you learn that mannerisms, how they speak, how they joke. And if an imposter comes, you can almost immediately pick it up. Yeah, you sound like them, but no, they would never say it like this, right? That's just, that's just, I, 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 I know them too well. They, you know, it's like 
triggers, but nobody picks up the, the little triggers and the clues that is left all the way through the Old Testament. Now, well, what I know now, when I read the Bible, when I read the Bible now, I'm like, this was so poorly and sloppily done. Sloppily, if that's a word. I can, because of what I know now and all the extra stuff that I've researched and looked into, when I read the Bible now, I'm like, y'all were really amateurs at Nicaea. I didn't think it until I got a little more understanding of the scriptures and the different things that had been toyed with. Now I can see it. I'm like, this is amateur work. Like everybody should be catching this, but it took me years to catch it. But that was because I was diligent in my studying of the Bible. Like I was, I was a true Christian. I'm like, yeah, I'm not just talking about this. I'm like really living this life. Like I really want to go to heaven. And the more I searched, the more pissed off I got about this. I'm like, this this work is sloppily done, right? Now that I know all that I know, but I ain't gonna fault you if, if it's if you still use it. You can still use it. You really can. Um, but you have to be aware of what's happening so you don't get caught up in some of the things that religion takes and just kind of beats you over the head with because you're really ignorant. You know, so, but I still think it's absolutely a great resource. It's like that connecting piece where you can connect with people, where you can find some common ground. You just can't beat them over the head and shove it down. You know, it's multiple God speaking in here. That don't work. That don't work because they will X you out like the plague post haste. <laughs> and you like, you kill all your, you kill all your immediate uh, doors in to help them wake up and really see the truth of what's before their eyes. You cannot... You cannot come at people like that, at least in my in my own experience, right? You got to use some wisdom. Okay, hold on. Who we at? 57 minutes? Wait, okay. Let me, let me go for a few more minutes. I got appointment at 10, but I'm definitely not going to go to 10, but we're going to take a few more minutes. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Page 32, the third paragraph on the bottom. Therefore, I teach you only those laws which you can understand, that you may become men and follow the seven laws of the Son of Man. Then will the unknown angels of the Heavenly Father also reveal their laws to you, that God's Holy Spirit may descend upon you and lead you to his law. And all were astonished at his wisdom and asked him, continue, master, and teach us all the laws which we can receive. And Jesus continued, God commanded your forefathers, thou shalt not kill, but their heart was hardened and they killed. Then Moses desired that at least they should not kill men, and he suffered them to kill beasts. And then the heart of your forefathers was hardened yet more, and they killed men and beasts likewise. But I say to you, kill neither men nor beasts, nor yet the food which goes into your mouth. For if you eat living food, the same will quicken you. But if you kill your food, the dead food will kill you also. For life comes only from life, and from death comes always death. For everything which kills your foods kills your bodies also. And everything which kills your bodies kills your souls also. And your bodies become what your foods are, even as your spirit likewise become what your thoughts are. All right? There's scientific tests that have been done and proven that literally what you eat, you become right? Your blood changes. It cycles through every, I think it's like 90 days. So you can literally change the, um, the, the quality, I'll say change the quality of your blood. If you decided to eat nothing but apples for 90 days, you will literally, not only will you get a spiritual awakening during this 90 days, but everything you put in your mouth is information, either, either, Information for life or information for death, right? And when you go on a, um, like a, say if you go on a fruit fast, well, that's probably the wrong way to say that. I say a fruit feast, right? We be saying fast, but y'all get it. If you go on a fruit feast, right, not only will you notice the changes in your body that it's going to feel better, things are going to start to heal, but the information that's in those fruits, and even though, and people get into some, I done ran into a couple people where it's not like it used to be the pesticides. The 
the point is it's still going to work, right? <laughs> it's still going to work. You just got to wash it a little bit better. Sure, they GMO, all this stuff, but it's still going to friggin' work. It really is, right? People still get healed off of these fruits. They're like, now that's why we can't just eat fruits because it's lacking nutrients, which is why we have to eat meat. No, you're really ignorant. Like, you're just making excuses for your belly because you want to chew on the beast. <laughs> like, uh, um... Um, Malachi, you want to chew on the backs of animals, right? So, um, but it really will change uh, your blood, right? And it's going to run new information through it. Whatever you feed your body, your body is already kind of like pre-programmed in what to do based on what you put here, what you put here, and what you put here, right? And it's going to first affect the flesh. Well, it's simultaneously going to affect the flesh and the spirit at the same time. Then you're going to start seeing in your emotions and all that stuff. People who eat meat a lot of time or even like drink alcohol, the livers are dirty, they get angry. Because certain things happen based on what it is and how the body is designed to process the different things that flow through your body. Test it. Right? If y'all, you ain't quite made it to a, a water feast yet, do a fruit feast. You know, and it'll you become even more efficient if you do it, uh, do a mono fruit feast instead of mixing because people don't really understand like the mixing of the foods. It didn't bother me when I was younger, but when I got a little bit older, get past 40, something happened with my body where I can't mix stuff. And you shouldn't be mixing it anyway because it, if you mix citrus fruits and sweet fruits in your gut, it's going to begin to like, Ferment is going to take longer to pass through. You're going to start having digestive issues and stuff because you're pairing the wrong foods together. Um, matter of fact, this, this actually talks about that. Hold on. Let me keep reading. For if you eat living food, the same will quicken you. But if you kill your food, the dead food will kill you also. For life comes only from life and from death comes always death. For everything which kills your foods kills your bodies also. And everything which kills your bodies kills your souls also. And your bodies become what your foods are, even as your spirits likewise become what your thoughts are. Therefore, eat not anything. Listen to this, and it's going to be hard for some people. But I am working to get to this type of lifestyle, eating, now I want to say 90% raw. And I may still sting. I'm, I'm still working to get there because I, you know, sometimes I just need something warm in my belly. Listen, listen to this. Therefore, eat not anything which fire or frost or water has destroyed. For burned, frozen, and rotted foods will burn, freeze, and rot your body also. Be not like the foolish husbandman who sowed in his ground cooked and frozen and rotten seeds. And the autumn came, and his fields bore nothing, and great was his distress. But be like that husbandman who sowed in his field living seed, and whose field bore living ears of wheat, paying a hundredfold for the seeds which he planted. For I tell you truly, live only by the fire of life, and prepare not your foods with the fire of death, which kills your foods, your bodies, and your souls also." For I tell you truly, live only by the fire of life and prepare not your foods with the fire of death, which kills your foods, your bodies, and your souls also. Master, where is the fire of life? Asked some of them. In you, in your blood, and in your bodies. And the fire of death? Asked others. It is the fire which blazes outside your body, which is hotter than your blood. With that fire of death, you cook your foods in your homes and in your fields. I tell you truly, it is the same fire which destroys your foods and your bodies, even as the fire of malice, which, ravage, which ravages your thoughts, ravages your spirits. For your body is that which you eat, and your spirit is that which you think. Eat nothing, therefore, which a, strong, which a stronger fire than the fire of life has killed. Ain't that something? Listen to this. Hold on. Hold on. For your body is that what you eat, and your spirit is that what you think. 
eat nothing therefore which a stronger fire than the fire of life has killed right we cook our foods on 350 in an oven 375 400 what's the temperature of our body the temperature the warmest it should stay 98 points 98.6 or 98.7 not yet 98 98.6 definitely don't go over 98.7 and it says you shouldn't eat anything cooked past that temperature well i think we all need to invest in sun ovens i think it was vanette she shared a picture of it i, I looked into it i'm like this is interesting i think i'm probably getting me one before the summer is out and i'm gonna test it right and i'm just like i don't know i, I just i'm just had a i don't know i'm gonna have a i'm like man can't microwave my food. I'm like, boy, this is just going to be a long transition. Hopefully not too long. But I guess once you get real good with preparing and get consistent with preparing meals. I got all kinds of plant-based cookbooks. But I also have a couple raw cookbooks. And there's some amazing looking recipes in there. And none of them were cooked with fire. Right? I'm like, I didn't even know you could do this. I'm like, this, I got to try some of this stuff. Because this is amazing. You know, I follow their YouTube channels and... I'm just like, wow, there's one um, girl up there, um, Fully Raw Christina, you know, and she doesn't cook any of her food, but she got the best looking meals. I'm like, oh my gosh. And she, I'm like, this is amazing. Like, I, I, I really got to be more diligent about this, you know. So, the Sun Oven cook at 350 also. Oh, but it, it, it's cooked by the sun, though. It's cooked by the sun. It's a different type of... Fire. This actually goes into that a little bit. Let me see. Let me see. We'll get to it. Hold on. Where we at? 107? I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a few more minutes and we're gonna pause. Let me see. For your body is that which you eat, and your spirit is that which you think. Eat nothing, therefore, which a stronger fire than the fire of life has killed. Wherefore, prepare and eat all fruits of trees and all grasses of the fields and all milk of beasts good for eating. For all these are fed and ripened by the fire of life. All are the gift of the angels of our earthly mother. But eat nothing to which only the fire of death gives savor, for such is of Satan. How should we cook our daily bread without fire, master? Asked some with great astonishment. Let the angels of God prepare your bread. Moisten your wheat that the angel of water may enter it. Then set in the air, then set it in the air that the angel of air may also embrace it. And leave it from morning to evening beneath the sun that the angel of sunshine may descend upon it. And the blessing of the three angels will soon make the germ of life to sprout in your wheat. Then crush your grain and make thin wafers as did your forefathers when they departed out of Egypt, the house of bondage. Put them back again beneath the sun from its appearing. And when it is risen to its highest in the heavens, turn them over on the other side that they may be embraced there also by the angel of sunshine and leave them there until the sun be set. For the angels of water, of air, and of sunshine fed and ripened the wheat in the field and they likewise must also prepare your bread. And the same sun, which with the fire of life made the wheat to grow and ripen, must cook your bread with the same fire. For the fire of the sun gives life to the wheat, to the bread, and to the body. But the fire of death kills the wheat, the bread, and the body. And the living angels of the living God serve only living men. For God is the God of the living and not the God of the dead. So eat always from the table of God, the fruits of the trees, the grain and grasses of the field, <coughs> the milk of beasts, and the honey of bees. For everything beyond these is of Satan and leads by the way of sins and of diseases unto death. But the foods which you eat from the abundant table of God give strength and youth to your body, and you will never see diseases. For the table of God fed Methuselah of old, and I tell you truly, if you live even as he lived, then will the God of the living give you also long life upon the earth as was his. Like, a lot of us can't even fathom that. Like, we got all these choices and stuff. You know how far we come along with technology to go back to just eating like this? I will not. And some people, some people will do 
just that. Like people who find out they're sick and they're dying, they caught some kind of disease because they couldn't control this movement. They had no care in the world. Everything was free to pass through their lips, right? And some people just got the mindset, well, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die eating what I want. And I know a couple people that pass just that way. Like, it's sad. Like, not even being on death's doors will change the way you think, knowing that if you change the way you eat, you could possibly extend your life for a very long time. Yeah, it may be hard at first while you're going through the restoration period. But some people, they just, they just don't, they don't want to give up the steaks. They don't want to give up the chicken. None of the stuff that destroys the body. They just, they rather enjoy the pleasure of it than to turn around and do something different. I'm just like, wow. I mean, I get it, right? Because we enjoy our food, right? And especially if you you hanging out with friends, good conversation. Or, oh, man. But it's just, it's, it's, it's just a decision you have to make. That's, that's, that's where you find out what a, you know how you be seeing these statistics and stuff. They said the 1% of the world hold the riches or whatever, and the other 99% or whatever. You know, people who are successful, they're in the highest, the highest, well, I'm sorry, the, the smallest percentage where the masses is they don't, they, they're not disciplined, right? It's the same thing spiritually. We literally have to set ourselves apart from the masses, walk away from the 99% to be in the 1% because this is where we find life. And for those who don't like discipline, that looks like a hard road. And true indeed, it may be hard on the way there. But when you get there and you've raised your frequency to that level, you can't imagine living any other way. And now we're up here trying to pull. Hey, come on. There's so much room up here. People say it's crowded at the top. No, my G, it's so much room at the top because everybody want to stay down there. Like, come on. You know, it's, I don't know. You're good. Nobody but people like you can make it. No, we all start on the same playing field in life for the most part, right? Yeah, for the most part, just different parts of the world. But everybody comes in, clean slate, everything. You can also cook the bread in your house oven on a low temperature for a long time. Some of us ain't that patient. That bread ain't done yet. <clears throat> Cut the stove up. <laughs> we ain't got time to wait. Like you really have to have patience. You got to prep. Maybe like a day to old. That's for dinner tonight? No. This for dinner tomorrow. <laughs> like, how many people, it's not too many people that are cooked the day before. They don't do meal prep. I got a problem with doing meal prep sometimes, right? I skirt the lines of time. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. But I, I would love, like, my desire is to be, my heart is right. I'm pure. I, I want to go in that direction, right? But it, it's, it's hard sometimes. It really is. So eat always from the table of God, the fruits of the trees, the grain of the grasses of the field, the milk of beasts, and the honey of bees. For everything beyond these is of Satan and leads by way of sins and of diseases unto death. But the foods which you eat from the abundant table of God give strength and youth to your body, and you will never see disease. For the table of God fed Methuselah of old, and I tell you truly, if you live even as he lived, then will the God of the living give you also long life upon the earth as was his. For I tell you truly, the God of the living is richer than all the rich of the earth. And his abundant table is richer than all the richest table of feasting of all the rich upon the earth. Eat therefore all your life at the table of our earthly mother and you will never see want. And when you eat at her table, Eat all things, even as they are found on the table of your earthly mother. Cook not, neither mix all things with one another. Least your bowels become as steaming bogs. That is so gross. Everybody, if you don't know what steaming bogs is, today it's probably turned the bubble guts. <laughs> uh, bowels full of steaming bogs. You'd have mixed all kinds of abominations in your gut. <laughs> And got dessert too? Ain't none of this stuff gonna process the right way. Right? Hold up. Hold on. Listen, I'm gonna read this and then we're gonna pause. Cook not, neither mix all things with one another. Least your bowels become as steaming bogs. For I tell you truly, 
This is abominable in the eyes of the Lord. You think, and it's abominable to us, our noses and everything else. And be not like the greedy servant who always ate up at the table of his Lord, the portions of others. And he devoured everything himself and mixed together all in his gluttony. And seeing that, his Lord was wroth with him and drove him from the table. And when all had ended their meal, he mixed together all that remained upon the table and called the greedy servant to him and said, Take and eat all of this with the swine, for your place is with them and not at my table. Sheesh. Imagine somebody saying that to you. Get out of here, you pig. I'm like, sheesh. Take and eat all of this with the swine, for your place is with them and not at my table. Take heed, therefore, and defile not with all kinds of abominations the temple of your bodies. Be content with two or three sorts of foods, which you will find always upon the table of our earthly mother. And desire not to devour all things which you see around. For I tell you truly, if you mix together all sorts of food in your body, then the peace of your body will cease an endless war raging you. Like we all can testify, that's the truth right here. It is. Even if you don't agree with nothing else that we done found in here, everybody in here eat and everybody know, right? Everybody know that this is the truth. And it will be blotted out even as homes and kingdoms divide against themselves, work their own destruction, divided against themselves, work their own destruction, for your God is the God of peace, nor, I'm sorry, hold on. For your God is the God of peace and does never help division. Arouse not, therefore, against you the wrath of God, lest he drive you from his table, and lest you be compelled to go to the table of Satan, where the fire of sins, diseases, and death will corrupt your body. And when you eat, listen to this, my... My people, they eat till they nice and full. Nice and full. Don't do that. I I stopped doing that a while ago. I can't eat till I'm full. You, first of all, you get the itis. I just don't like feeling that way. But I don't like, I mean, I, I now I'm learning to eat to the point where I'm satiated, right? I'm, I'm good. Listen, some people eat till they about to throw up. Like, then they felt they done had a good meal. Like, holidays, we should call these glutton days. Look. And when you eat, never eat until fullness. Flee the temptations of Satan and listen to the voice of God's angels. For Satan and his power tempt you always to eat more and more. But live by the spirit and resist the desires of the body. And your fasting is always pleasing in the eyes of the angels of God. So give heed how much you have eaten when your body is sated and always eat less by a third. Let the weight of your daily food be not less than a mina, but mark that it go not beyond two. Then will the angels of God serve you always, and you will never fall into the bondage of Satan and of his diseases. People catching heart attacks, uh, all types of things that come from us in our poor diets. Um, heart attacks, strokes, blood clots arteries clogged up all of these things right this comes from not obeying the laws of life right and now our life is so much more hard than it had to be simply because we simply could not control our flesh <laughs> hey sister she said i was definitely fighting eating m ms this morning <laughs> look let the weight of your daily food be not less than a mina, but mark that it go not beyond two. Then will the angels of God serve you always, and you will never fall into the bondage of Satan and of his diseases. Trouble not the work of the angels in your body by eating often. For I tell you truly, he who eats more than twice in the day does in him the work of Satan. And the angels of God leave his body and soon Satan will take possession of it. Eat only when the sun is highest in the heavens and again when it's set. I've kind of made it a habit now, trying to get the kids in a habit of not even eating till noontime, right? And something, oh, that's a big, no, it's not. First of all, like if they get up, especially on the weekends, they get up playing the game, they don't even realize they're hungry. They don't even come looking for something to eat till afternoon because they're so engrossed in the game. That's like, a, they shouldn't be doing that either, but... 
ain't nobody gonna starve to death if you wait till noon right let your body give your body your system a chance to fully come online without always shoving something down your throat right and going to school and the indoctrination of how you're supposed to feed your body you need meats starch and a vegetable first of all hot steaming bogs in your gut <laughs> that's what that is you cannot mix them in your belly yes we would right that right on top we taught to eat three times a day and it's not right it literally tears the body up unless somebody say you even when you go to jail you're gonna get three hots in a cot right everybody everybody's against the laws of life every you're they trying to kill your body every which way right we're eating too much we eating too many times a day we mixing all kinds of foods abominations in our gut we think we're doing what's the right well, where's the, you got a starch in the meat where's the vegetables I decided not to make one. People will make a fuss if you're missing one of them items. Oh, a starch in a vegetable. You're trying to you think you're doing something. Well, I'm cutting out meat. I just got a starch in a vegetable. Still, hot steaming bogs in your gut. <laughs> well, the father gave us a choice to eat them once or twice a day. You can eat as many times as you want to. Right? You can, like, it's literally your choice. Like, test it. I mean, we all went through this. But as you get older, you realize, man, it's not so good for the body. And we literally choose to only eat, like, once. Like, my ultimate goal is to, like, when I when I do eat, I'll eat once a day. Right? They call it OMAD, one meal a day. Right? But I'm fine with one meal a day. I, I really am. Man, eat it probably about four. It'll be the, the dinner meal with the family or whatever. But really hungry for real throughout the day. You know, um, especially when you're working or whatever. But some people, if they have, like, really, really strenuous jobs, you know, they're like, well, I need, I need more than this. You know, and then that's okay, right? Okay. Hold on. We're almost done. Let me finish this right here. For I tell you truly, he who eats more than twice in the day does in him the work of Satan. And the angels of God leave his body, and soon Satan take possession of it. Eat only when the sun is highest in the heavens, and again when it is set, and you will never see disease. For such finds favor in the eyes of the Lord. And if you will that the angels of God rejoice in your body, and that Satan shun you afar. Hold on, let me read that again. And if you will that the angels of God rejoice in your body, and that Satan shun you afar, then sit but once in the day at the table of God. Right? Like I just said, right? Once. I'm getting there, y'all. And if you will that the angels of God rejoice in your body and that Satan shun you afar, then sit but once in the day at the table of God. And then your days will be long upon the earth. For this is pleasing in the eyes of the Lord. Eat always when the table of God is served before you and eat always of that which you find upon the table of God. For I tell you truly, God knows well what your body needs and when it needs. And that is what we're going to pause at today, my beautiful people. <clears throat> All right. So let me put this page on my hair. All right, beautiful people. It is Monday, February 20, 2023, day 338 of year four of reading through books, laws, and prophets. And of the four-year consecutive day count, day 1,357, we finished reading the book of Ashong and the Romance of the Red Star, which is another name for a wasp. And we read pages 52 through 54 in this scene, Gospel of Peace. And Father, we thank you that you make all things beautiful. All right, beautiful people, that is it for today jamia said let your let food be your medicine and medicine be your food even medication must be taken at certain times yeah i agree with that <clears throat> waiting until waiting to eat until noon and at sunset helps your digestive system metabolism it is like if people study that they'll see it's <clears throat> back in the day before all the science and stuff really started coming out like they was like already doing this those who walking in the 
the lines of light with the father like they already knew this it's just now that science is being able to prove some of these things that we find in the ancient scrolls right so i think i thank the creator for that for technology and for you know just being able to to verify some things not that we're waiting for the verification of this stuff to come out before we do it but you know your um <clears throat> your uh your spirit can testify to the truth when it hears it, right? All right, y'all. Oh, that's that's good. My sister, she's an RN. She said, if we were all healthy, there would be no health care. You know how many people would be out of a job if everybody was healthy? <clears throat> Which is why the pharmaceuticals, like all, all of this stuff, like it's one big shenaniganizing ring that's happening to keep people sick but it's your choice though it is absolutely for the most part if you're a little bit older and you know it, it's literally your choice like once you realize the truth about some things you can literally break yourself free from the tyranny of the healthcare system and not that it shouldn't be there because it should because it's just some people that's just going to need it they're absolutely going to need it right it's just like what uh moses said they they said the 10 was too hard the 10 would have given them life and life abundantly but they couldn't follow the 10 so we need to break them up into bite-sized pieces and then to pass them on and then the, the scribes and the pharisees they break them up even further now you got 630 commandments right and so that's like going to the hospital right you, you need crutches here we go take all this like so you need it for the people that just they just don't have the discipline at this time to do what's really required to live without all of that rigmarole, right? I, I'm sick of all of that rigmarole, right? I'm just, I want to live life and life more abundantly without all the restraints and stuff. And not that they aren't there, but as you grow, you're just going to realize that some things are just not even worth it. You, I could do that if I wanted to. I really could. And I'd sleep good tonight, right? But it's just not in me to do those type of things. I'm going to live according to the laws of life because... I've I've <clears throat> I've reprogrammed my spirit to light, right? Just like if you eat fruit for 90 days, like you literally reprogram your body, you reprogram your taste buds. That happens physically, but also also mentally, you get clarity, you begin to reprogram everything based on what you put into you. And we just not gonna violate that, right? All right, y'all. Yeah, when we hurt our bodies, we need health care. Yeah, like broken bones, yeah, clearly. You know, they definitely there for, for trauma. I don't disagree with that at all. You know, um, but most things aside from trauma, it can be handled outside the hospitals. You know, that's just, those are my thoughts. But, all right, beautiful people, that's it. I gotta go. I'll see y'all back here tomorrow morning, bright and early, 6.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace.